I think it's time for more tips, apps, hacks, and gadgets. We are home after a wonderful week in Hawaii, and now it's full bore ahead with uh, planning and preparation for our Alaska trip. And along those lines, I've been um, acquiring a few things and redoing things, figuring things out in the van. And um, so the first tip I have actually has to do with cord management, because cords can be quite a cause of friction in the van, whether we're making up the bed or moving things from the front where we've been driving and moving the cords to the back. Um, it, it's just been a real hassle. So I was in Staples uh, a couple of weeks ago and I found something, well actually it was this, but it was a larger version of this. And it comes with, um, actually I'll show you the one in the front which is the larger version. And it comes with a sticky back, but I did not use the sticky back, I used Velcro and you're going to want to be able to move these in and out. So here's the cord for a device and you slip it in like that and then when it's closed like this it's not going to go anywhere. And I've put three of these in the vehicle, one on each side of the bed and one in the front for all the cords that go up to our cameras and our iPhones and and all of those things. So this is where the cords plug into the USB port and I ran a piece of the cable raceway along here to get the cable over to the side so that it would then run up the side and then through the, this little device um, and keep the cable out of the way when you're making the bed because when you, see if I can do this, you want that cable to stay against the wall so it doesn't come out of the uh, USB port so it'll stay there. So this is really why I put these here to keep that keep that from happening and disconnecting which is very frustrating. The next tip I have is a, actually a recommendation of another YouTuber. I love finding small YouTube channels that I think are really going to take off kind of the way uh, Slim Potato Head did. And this one is a, a couple, a young couple with their uh, young a little boy who, who is you know great clickbait just an adorable little kid and the three of them live in Alaska and they have a teardrop trailer. The name of the channel is Playing with Sticks. I'll put the link below. He shares tips and tricks regarding his uh, teardrop trailer but a lot of those things can apply uh, uh, you know, across the platform. I also want to share um, something that very few people actually know about that has to do with YouTube. They have a service called YouTube Premium. I know some of you are premium subscribers. But the wonderful thing about YouTube Premium is you don't have to see commercials and you can download YouTube videos and take them with you. So whenever we're going off someplace, I usually download many, many, many hours of YouTube channels that I watch or things that I want to learn about. So if I'm trying to learn more about uh, video editing or photography or any of the other things I'm interested in, I'll down those, you, those YouTube channels. And really that has taken the place of our you know, need for a lot of streaming services like Netflix. So the only other entertainment channel we have now is the uh, Amazon Prime. And we watch almost exclusively uh, YouTube for our entertainment. And the cost for a family is only $15. A family includes five other, five total people. And so you can share it with your family members. And for five of you, for $15 a month, I think it's a real bargain, but especially not to have to watch commercials. And, um, and so that's the one service we've had for many years, and we will be keeping up. The next, uh, the next gadget uh, came about because I met one of... Um, I met up at the beach with another YouTube subscriber named Pam, and she showed me her 2010 Pleasure Way Ascent, which is where I learned that the older Pleasure Ways had two fans that helped cool their refrigerators, and the new ones only have one. Um, but she shared with me some of the things she had done to her van, one of which is an elbow pad for the front. Early, uh, one of my early videos where I kind of um, talked about the things we liked and didn't like about the van was that the Mercedes 
didn't have uh, elbow pads or it didn't have an armrest on that on the outside of the for the occupants and she showed me this elbow pad that has worked out great and of course I'll have uh, links below and it is an affiliate link um, I, I don't want to make you think you need to buy anything through my channel I put the links there so that it can help you find things and research things um, but it's really more of a service than I'm telling you to buy stuff that you don't need the next thing is uh, something actually that I I learned through Neil's channel at Ultra Mobility. Now I had searched for a shower nozzle for a very long time and couldn't find one that would fit right onto the, the, uh, the connectors for the shower, especially the outside shower. I've removed the inside shower, I don't use that. Uh, but uh, I was looking for one that would do a better job of turning the shower head on and off and I was so happy when I watched one of Neil's videos where he actually demonstrated one that he found and so I ended up ordering that and uh, installing it on our outside in our outside shower and that is um, it's just a much better nozzle it's not necessarily better quality but it turns on and off more easily and the hose is a metal hose instead of that plastic that doesn't bend very well and so it's easier to put it away to do is fish this thing around this little bend. Oh, I need some Teflon tape. Like that and then pull. Okay. Oh, and I need the washer. Need the washer. You know, I had looked online for an alternative hose, and I never found this, so I'm sure glad he did. Okay, now let's see how this fish is in there. It does it better than that other one. Oh, so much easier. Oh, this is so much better. That other thing was you're constantly fighting with it. And then this can fit right there. So much better. Oh, that's pretty slick. Just go like that to turn it off. Yay! And Neil also had recommended something else that I had searched on, on uh, Amazon and couldn't find, which was a larger, I had purchased a teak wood mat long time ago, but I wanted one that was a uh, better size that would fit right into the well of the shower on the inside. So if we're going to shower outside, we'll take that, um, the one that he recommended, which I bought, it's actually bamboo, not teak, and move that outside. And so you're standing on something that's, you know, not going to collect gravel and dirt and all that sort of thing. A little bit easier to shower on than the one that I was using, which was only not even a foot wide, I don't think. So both of those items, you can feel free to purchase them from, um, through Neil's links. Uh, and I'll put Neil's, uh, the video that Neil did on that below. And I've also put them on my, um, my gear page that I now have with Amazon. So that will be below. This is where I keep the bamboo flooring or mat. And I actually keep a bath mat underneath it. Keeps things from jiggling around, but also you have something to dry your feet off on when you get back into the van. And that's a, this is twice the size of the one that I had purchased. So the next item came about because on our last trip out to Lake Havasu, I forgot to take the charging uh, brick for my laptop. And, uh, and so I was forced then to use the, um, just a USB charger to charge my laptop, which is very, very slow. So I could easily um, drain the battery on my laptop in a few hours, and it would take many, many hours for it to recharge. And so I um, decided that in case I ever forgot my, my battery brick again, I would get one of these car chargers that plugs into your 12-volt cigarette lighter. And the reason this one is great is because it has, it's a two port, but it has, so on my, I use, I use a Mac, so if you have another 
kind of computer it may not apply um, this one has the typical old school USB charging port but it also has a USB C port and when I used it uh, forgot where we went I used it somewhere and it held the charge for uh, I mean it, it held the charge completely so I didn't have to worry about draining the battery on my laptop so I'll put that below in case you're interested for your laptops when you're traveling but then another subscriber who goes by the name Doug Tuck told me that he switched out his uh, the USB chargers that sit below the ottomans on the Pleasure Way Ascent he um, he replaced those with a um, with a you know the typical the old school one of these things whatever they're called <laughs> um, this this style he replaced it with that and he says it charges his devices faster so he can plug something like this into it and probably charge more devices as well as um, charge at a faster rate. Okay, the last uh, couple of items I have are actually kind of a follow-up that I had failed to show you earlier. One is I had talked about the, the screens on the Pleasure Way. Um, they used to have Velcro to hold the screens down. Pleasure Way has uh, stopped doing that as of, I think, the 2019 model. They are now magnets. And I think it was uh, might have been Doug Tuck who also noticed in one of the videos that I had magnets on mine. And he asked me to show those. Here's a close-up of the magnets. So basically all they did was remove the Velcro here and here and put magnets on. And then I think, now you can never remove this, um, you can never get rid of this sticky stuff on these shades and MCD will tell you on their website don't use anything stronger than soap and water. I could probably run some soap and water on there and it would help to remove that. But uh, that's the situation there. And so I think what pleasure, what the dealer did for us, I think they, they slip a magnet inside of here and that's what makes it stick to the magnet. Um, but there, there it is. You can see that these things don't roll up very well. They get, they just are weird. It's like they, they need to, the tension needs to be increased all the time. And I'm not going to futz with that because you got to take it all the way out to do that. And the dealer has done it several times. So these are really are pathetic shades. Or it could be the operator. <laughs> and if, uh, oh, he was looking for where he could purchase those. We had the dealer install them, um, so you probably would have to go back through your dealer to find these magnets. Uh, I guess he had found some online. They were too strong, he said. Um, but I really dislike these MCD shades so much that I'm thinking of taking the shades out completely um, because we just don't use them. We use the we use the drapes that I made almost exclusively because they do such a good job of keeping the temperature and the light out. Um, but along those lines, it, um, I want to talk briefly about those, the shades I made because I had, I've kind of given that a lot of thought. Oh, actually, I have another tip after this one about the bed. Um, so I, I have a new thought about how to make these. I think it was Doug Tuck's wife who actually purchased the same fabric and is going to make them. And let me take this down. The only the one thing I really dislike about these is that you have to use Velcro. So you have to use Velcro to keep to keep these up um, because Pleasure Way puts this plastic bit around the window, kind of like a frame. And the Velcro, even though I purchased the industrial strength Velcro, it still, it still wants to sometimes kind of come down. I think with time it might adhere better to the, um, to the plastic that's trying to stick to this plastic here. But so far it's, uh, it's working. But my thought with regard to making these, um, these shades uh, is that I had purchased all this black uh, binding, the seam binding, 
at the store and then had bound the two layers. So I have, this is the, the warm window fabric and then this is the kind of the fashion fabric that I lined it with. Um, and I had used binding, seam binding material to cover that. And the more I think about it, the, if I were to do this again, I would actually just cut this fashion fabric about maybe, a, a, maybe an inch and a half to two inches wider and then use that as a kind of a self bind the, the, the material together. So you wouldn't have to buy any seam binding and you would just self bind it and wrap the fabric around to the other side and stitch it. I think that would, um, it would reduce the amount of bulkage, although it's not that bulky. It would reduce the bulk and it would just be, it would be less expensive and I think it would actually be easier. So give that a try when you're making these. But this was a prototype and you're always learning from prototypes. So speaking of prototypes, I have made several kind of prototypes for bedding because bedding seems to be a big bugaboo for everybody in a camper van. Well, not if you've figured yours out. And I guess I should qualify that by saying that our situation is somewhat unique because I'm five foot six and John is six foot five and he can't sleep in a enclosed bag like a sleeping bag or like a, a Betty I think it's called Betty's bags or Betty's bedding or whatever it's called he can't sleep in that so um, uh, my first one was the I did a duvet cover with the uh, sheepskin inside of it and that that works although there's still a lot of futzing with tucking things in and then I made the um, these uh, kind of like uh, duvalet bed covers. I bought the one inch foam and I made like a sheet cover for it. I just took an old sheet and covered it. And, and that worked except again, things shift in the night. And uh, I think I woke up in the middle of the night as I often do thinking of things for the van um, and had this idea of how to make the bed so that things wouldn't move around. So I've um, gone ahead and put the boards in where the um, bedding goes and got down the two foam pads that I made. So if you're gonna, if you wanna have that extra padding at night, you would just lift this up and slip the pad in like that with the fold toward the center and then you can you know put it in put it all the way up and then and then put the sheet fitted part back but here's the real trick though is taking the second pad and just dropping it down into that crack where the two bits come together and then extending the bed so that it actually captures, actually captures this so it can't go anywhere. And that makes it so it doesn't move around at night and it's super comfy. So that's my bed tip. <laughs> One of the things I liked about these sheets from Target is that they have two layers of elastic around here. Usually fitted sheets just have this one but theirs has two, so it does a good job of snugging it down. Um, so uh, I think I'm gonna choose to see if John can live without the second pad. And we'll just um, leave it up top in the front part um, until he says he needs, a, needs extra cushion. Um, so that's gonna be that. But we're going to drive around though with this on here. It'll help protect the sofa as well as just make it easier because, you know, if you've got a lot of mosquitoes or bugs around, you don't want to open up the back hatch in order to make the bed and tuck everything in. Um, so this could help with that. Uh, oh, another tip though, too, with making the bed, if you know you're going into a buggy area, make your bed before you get there and that way you don't have to be fighting the bugs to get them out of the van. Those are all the tips, apps, hacks, and gadgets I have for you this time. I have several things on order that I will share with you as we prepare for our trip to Alaska. And I thank you so much for watching. Um, uh, you might want to, can you see what I'm doing down here?
Okay, if you turn it, turn, turn it. 